a black SUV pull up right beside us. And he just, the dude tall, he's about as tall as you. You know what I'm saying? He, he tall. And he jump out and he just pointed a gun right in my face. We ain't self made. We're God made. We're yours truly. We want you to get empowered to edify body. God made. What's up, everybody? It's your boy ASAP Preach. You are tuned into the God Made Podcast. Man, we've been going crazy this week. We hit up Bandera, Texas on Saturday. It was crazy. A whole bunch. Got me a cowboy hat. Boy, got some boots for the first time. I felt like, man, I, I got to at least get one outfit in. And uh, and then we also hit up Ben Wheeler, Texas. Man, I'm telling you, Ben Wheeler was turned up. These people, they didn't even have cell phones. It was like a recovery group. So they was just all turned up for Jesus. The sound system was incredible. Some of the best sound system system I've ever been to in my life. I was turned up. We had Brother Bo, Big Yeet with us. Um, but this week, I just want to let you guys know we have someone special, one of my best friends with me tonight. And I'm super excited to just go in a little in depth with his journey, uh, his life, his testimony, but also how we met and just kind of have some cool topics and allow the Holy Spirit to lead tonight. I hope y'all been enjo enjoying the podcast that we've been dropping on the po uh, on the Pando app because I noticed that like um it's you know it hasn't been doing numbers like obviously my music, you know, cuz y'all probably repetitive like repetitively just listening to the songs. But I hope that is good. If it is, like please let me know. Um I also want to address something if you're watching this and you're watching all my other videos and you're like, man, ASAP Preach took down his P.O. box, I want to let you guys know that I got a lot of mail. I've gotten over like 300 pieces of mail, and every single week when I check that thing, it's like 50 to 100 pieces of mail every single week. And I, it got, I started reading like all of them up to about a week or two ago. And it just started to get really overwhelming for me. And, you know, we do have a team that wants to go through them and read them. But even them, you know, they have a lot of things going on. And so I don't want to offend nobody. When I went out to the hobby unit, I had two females come up to me. And they were just real, like, sad that, you know, you could see it on their face when they're like, we wrote you. And I was like, uh, I was like, you know, to I don't think they understood the level of how many letters I end up getting. And so I couldn't, I can't remember every single person that writes me. And, um, and so I didn't want to offend them and it broke my heart. And so I just want to let you guys know that I love you guys and I really do appreciate the letters. Trust me, I still got a lot of letters to read. And so maybe in a couple of months when I get caught up on all of them, then I'll throw my PO box back in there. And, uh, and then I, I'll, I'll put it up for maybe a couple months or a month or so or a couple weeks. And if y'all want to write me, y'all can. But I just don't want to offend nobody. The last thing I want y'all to do is come up to me when I'm doing these prison tours and doing these concerts and expect that I know who exactly who you are and that I've read your letters and I know it, it, your whole story. And so please forgive me. I don't want to offend nobody. I love you guys, though, and I really do appreciate the letters. I really like the I, – I really enjoyed – listening to y'all story and then seeing the little letters that are um that are just like hey asap i love your music listen to it all the time god uh, god bless and just something simple like that those are the ones i can get through really quick and i know that y'all really want to link up and y'all feel like connected to me through the podcast and through the uh, documentary but you know i really want to uh continue to do these podcasts and hope to encourage you hope to edify you through this th with my brothers in christ god made music and just some awesome guests that I'll have, be having on here soon. We got Jordan Wilson, Nikki Gracious, some other really heavy hitters and stuff. And um, and so I'm just super excited that God is allowing me to just do this right now. I didn't even have to wake up this morning, so I'm just grateful. But today I want to just introduce one of my best friends finally. And I know you know him from I Did Too. And we're probably going to drop some music videos during this podcast or in a couple of days with this podcast and it is my boy adrian butler what it do my boy how you doing dog? ab from texas <laughs> yes sir ski yes sir thank you for having me bro this is lit yeah this is awesome man i'm super excited yeah dog. we almost started doing a podcast we was like no nope, we gotta pray asap preach I always stands I always say a prayer that's what it stands for so i was like man we gotta stop we gotta redo all of that we gotta yeah, get straight to it <laughs> 
Um, but we've been wanting to do this for a while, man. And, you know, we got some crazy new music in the chamber, too. Yeah. You know, um, and you do, too. Yeah, bro. You're one person, though, I ain't going to lie, yeah. that has, and we, we've we talked about this many times. I'm we working on, the phone. on it. Yeah. <laughs> he has over, like, hundreds of songs with no album. Maybe yeah. he has one album from, like, 2014. And really a mixtape. Yeah, really a mixtape. And I'm on it. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, the only feature, I feel like. Yeah. Was I you one of them? Uh, I think you and John John yeah. might be the only features on yeah, so I don't know if y'all know. Y'all might know who Jonathan Trailer is. Uh, he's one of our really good friends. He's one of his best friends, yeah. and he's an amazing singer that drives, uh, drives, uh, travels the world and does worship music. Super, super yeah, good. Shout out he to dope. John John. Yes, sir. Uh, but yeah, we we had this song called uh, "Coming for Your Head." That was hilarious. He, he made the beat with his mouth. That was that was fun. Like yeah, like, so I I, I kind of grew up like. Being influenced, I, I wanted to be a producer. I didn't even want to rap. Really? When I first started, I just wanted to make beats. So I was a kid beating on the table while everybody was freestyling. With the pins. Facts. <laughs> and so, like, if, I, if you had pins right now, I could cook up one. You know? <laughs> really? Yeah. But, like, uh, so when I was making beats, that's when I was producing back then. Yeah. And uh, I was always just trying new stuff. And uh, I'm trying to remember what song it was that inspired me. It was probably a Timbaland song. Mm. You know, he was producing for Bubba Sparks at the time. Okay. And he was using. Was it my, booty, 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 it rocking, everywhere? Booty, booty okay. rocking everywhere? What was you listening to like, then, bro? Uh, it was it was on the album though. I think it was on the album though. Yeah. And uh, um, but like I was really invested in Timbaland, and so I liked what he did with his voice. So I was like, sure, I'm gonna try that. Yeah. And then make him for you. Already. Yeah. Bro. And it was cool because like, uh, you cut off like the head. Oh, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to play it, but I will play a concert footage uh, of yeah. back in the day. Like, when was this, 2012? It had to be. It had to be had 2012. To be. We was turning up the shows that we did back in the day. Yeah, we'll buddy. get into your testimony here in a little bit, but yeah. we're kind of like going on the flow with this. But me and Adrian Butler, tell them how, how you met me. So I, I met I met you um, through Ken Folk D-Ray, was it? No, no, no. Nah, it was through Church it was Boy. Church Boy. It's <laughs> yeah. a dude named Church Boy. He later changed his name to Phoenix. And, like, he's from Dallas. And so we met at an event. He liked what I did. He was like, bro, come to the crib. You know what I'm saying? I want you to get on the record. So I was like, okay, bet. So I'm at the crib. I'm rapping. And while I'm there, he's like, bro, I'm going to do this cypher with this guy named ASAP Preach. I'm going to see if I can get you on it. And so I ain't know nothing about it. I was like, okay, yeah. bet. Say less. So he reaches out to you, and uh, we show up. And this is six three six four white dude with tattoos. tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Where's ASAP Preach?" They're like, "Oh, this ASAP Preach." I was like, "Oh," and he was he was he put the cipher. No together. jumper looking at dodge. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put the cipher together. The guy who was shooting the video had like a little bitty. Task oh yeah, cam, little, yeah. It was like a cool pics. Yeah, yeah, cool yeah. pics camera. <laughs> cool pics camera. Oh my yeah. gosh! And I was blown away to be honest. Like he <laughs> he had me so hyped about that cool pics camera, because this. Let me remind you guys. Like this was like 2012. Like to have even a music video at this point was a big deal. Was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we had someone that could edit them for us and yeah, everything. Yeah. And so, like, bro, like y'all, these peep cats nowadays are so spoiled. Spo Everybody got a DSLR. It, for iPhone. real, for real. Facts. And so, like, yeah. So we, you can So I already had him on a song. Loved his verse. One of my favorites out of the whole thing. And uh, and he was over there being super creative with the with the shots with the cloning <laughs> and everything. I'll post post a little uh, clip of that right right here while I'm talking, but. He was having all the coolest ideas of everything. I was like, dang. From that point on, we clicked. Yeah, we clicked. <laughs> right at that point, we've been going head yeah. first ever since, no yeah. matter what. Thanks. Um, but it, it's cool. We've been doing, you've been getting on a lot of my songs throughout the years, and we've been doing a whole bunch of singles and really powerful stuff. And what's cool about it is that, you know, my genre is a little bit different than yours. You know, yeah. I can jump on all the type of music that you can most of the time. Thanks. But, you know, jumping into something with more of like a guitar and acoustics and then more like a recovery you know uh mental health type of music this was like the first time of you kind of branching out and jumping into something yeah. like that yeah how did how did how did you feel when you first started to like um you know start to be a little bit more diverse with that type of flow uh, i'm a i'm a church kid so it just kind of felt natural just kind of felt like a a, a 
a different form of expression. So I'm used to like um, Lil Wayne type, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a different bar, a witty bar every five seconds. Yeah, me thing. too. You know, and so like when we did, like I think the first one might have been Fall, you know? Yeah, Fall. And it, you just basically was like, hey, we just don't worship. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. just don't worship. We're going to speak to the people, you know? And so it kind of took me out of the, I'm going to do a bar every round. And now I want to touch you, touch your soul every round. Yeah, you know every bar. You know what I'm saying? Touch so, a message with a with the message. With a message. And so like I thought it was cool. I thought it was. Me too. I thought it was cool. I think I think the spirit of God was on the song. Me too. You know what I'm saying? In every word that I was saying, and that was very important to me that it wasn't me. Right. Because like in those other songs, I can rap, bro. I can rap. I can I can put punchlines together. So sometimes. You know your flesh can creep in like damn I gotta I gotta rewrite that because I need I need to hit harder. Mm -hmm. But like on that music, it's like God speak through me. You know what I'm saying? I I ain't, I ain't never me. heard you uh, rap like that before, and I yeah. I think you can remember me calling you right away after listening to it, and I it made me cry. Yeah, it was good it because was good like you know I I I'm always the type of person that wants to impact more than just having someone jam to my music yeah, yeah, yeah. i want someone to be impacted by it and so when i saw that god was using you on this new level of impact it got me emotional because i knew like uh, because i knew the potential that you had and so man you know what while you were talking about how church boy was like this yeah i'm doing a song with this asap preach tattoos white guy <laughs> you know it started to make me think of like the influence that I've always had yeah. and and not really grasping the the like the reality of my influence yeah until just recently when I was sharing my testimony with a little boombox speaker in South Carolina yeah. or North Carolina I, I we were preaching doing some street evangelism mm -hmm. and God was telling me to go over there and actually minister uh with, and share my testimony so when I was doing the street ministry yeah like people were up there preaching that type of message of that was just harsh. Like, you know, some people are not going to receive it like that. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? They're not going to receive the love because I remember in the scripture where it says it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus dying on the cross for you. Turn. He wants to save you from uh, from from hell. Turn from your sins. That is a level of love. It's telling the truth. True. Yeah. But there's an approach and a delivery of it. Yeah that I believe that's more effective and, um, and showing that, you know what, God loves you right where you're at. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't love you to stay right there. But when I was literally having blunts in my hand in jail yeah. from doing crazy stuff, he saw me right there and he loved me. Yeah. But when I went up there and I started preaching my testimony, I was my, you know, I got the chill bumps. I felt like man, I was nervous cause I haven't done a lot of street ministry in my life. I've done ministry like at the stores and like yeah. personal one on ones, but grabbing the mic and just start ministering in front of I was literally in the middle of the hood. Yeah. People all around they were that. all staring at me. Yeah. And they listened to every single word. They were clapping. People from the streets are all clapping, receiving what I said. And when I walked away and I realized that my that the influence that I had was really just like on a whole nother level than what I expected. Like it made me just be like, Lord, let, he, he just gave me like confidence yeah. through that because he was like, you know what? I want you to share your testimony more. I want you to be bold on the airplane. Mm -hmm. I want you to be bold in public when there's people around, you know, just quick testimonies. And bro, I've been having dreams about going to places and sharing my testimony by proclaiming it and speaking speaking and raising my voice and and people coming to me and receiving um you know uh from what I said and everything and so uh but yeah not to cut that topic off but I kind of wanted to share that for a second hey what's up I appreciate you watching the video but before we continue press that subscribe button right there and the bell notification so you can stay up to date to all the new videos that we drop on this channel now back to the video god bless now that's beautiful brother I think the test. I think testimonies are amazing. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, right? And the power of our testimony. I was at. I was in um, Tyler. I was in Tyler. Uh, I want to say two or three days ago, and I shared that. I shared that, and then I did a cipher. Yeah. And the cipher wasn't with people on a ticket. The cipher was with people from the audience. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, I want 
to hear your story for self encouragement, self, uh, you know, uh, and also there's somebody who might be in the audience who hears your story and gets deliverance, you know. And so we got people in the circle. We 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 took put the mic down. Everybody gathered in the circle, and I just told like three or four people to come out. They wasn't even on a ticket. I said I want to hear your testimony through rap, and so they start giving a testimony what? through rap. That just was lit, bro. It was lit, and like afterwards, hearing the testimonies of people who were set free and delivered just off of that circle. Some one kid was like, "Bro, I was scared." Wow, you know, he was like, "I was scared, but I did it anyway." And so I was able to share with him that God didn't give you fear. He gave you power, the power that you stepped out in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Joy, peace. That's the things that he gave you, the fruit of the spirit. And so just the stories that came out of people saying yes. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I hear when I when I hear you talking. Like the stories that came out of your yes. If you wouldn't have, if you wouldn't have said yes to God, right. you know, some of them people may not have got what they needed that day. Yeah, and even the person that's actually like sharing their testimony yeah. can receive a breakthrough just doing that because they're like, you know what? It's like they, they don't care about the waves at this point of all the people that are looking at you yeah. or thinking crazy things, but you just go out and you do what God called you to do and you speak the truth. You share your story of how God saved you. That could have saved somebody. Facts. Like that could have literally said, you know what? I was going to kill myself tonight. Yeah. I heard your story. Now I'm not going to. And, all, and now you start thinking like from a perspective now when you're walking in your life and you're starting to feel this fear of the devil telling you, hey, don't share your testimony. Be embarrassed right now. But because he knows what could happen if yeah. you was to be real and share your true testimony. And now that we get to it, our true testimony, a lot of people like to, you know, puff up their yeah. testimony to yeah. make it seem like you you was a gangbanger when right. you really wasn't. Yeah. And a lot of people like to, like, just make it seem like you was... I mean, yeah, people are going to watch this, and yeah, they're gangbangers, but not everybody in prison was a gang member. Facts. Not every single person in prison went to jail for a, a violent crime or right. did drugs. It, they yeah. could have did manslaughter in a uh, uh, in a car one night from partying one time. Yeah. And so and uh, and some people could be in here actually innocent. Yeah, very you true. You know, very and true. so but each testimony of wherever God saved you from is powerful, yeah. no matter what it is. If God saved you from homosexuality, right. that's, powerful. that's powerful. Don't be ashamed of that because right. that is going to uh, minister to somebody that's actually going through that. Facts. Like with you, we right. want to talk about this because, yeah, you didn't um, do a whole bunch of crazy things. You never even did drugs or, or you know, <laughs> like that, really, you know. Yeah. Well, there is a funny story about how you got some. <laughs> to come to church one time yeah, we, we, we could just go ahead and tell them how, yeah. how uh, on fire like you was yeah. willing to go all in i was so yeah. i wasn't i was like you said i wasn't like a a druggy guy you yeah know what I'm like I, I say i say this on stage i was a drug baby but it's because my mom and daddy drugged me to church like oh, okay. I, was, I was always there so i'm a church kid so we was there monday through friday for literally everything yeah. choir rehearsal bible study etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah so i didn't necessarily grow up i'm a hood kid though let's yeah. get that clear i'm a hood baby but i'm not a street baby yeah. and i feel like there's a difference some people jumped off the porch and they street kids yeah they grew up in the street i grew up in the hood same place but but still same like place, you being in the same place right. but like you 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 fell in love with god earlier than most people do it's not even that i fell in love with god it's just my mom and dad fell in love with God, mm. and they wanted to keep me out of that. But I, my brother, my brother is somebody who would be watching this, somebody who would be listening to Pamela. Yeah. Because we grew up in the same house, but my brother went full blood. He went full on blood. You know what I'm saying? So by the time we was, you know, middle school, he's wearing red every day. You mm. know what I'm saying? My brother coming home high, smelling like everything every day. Yeah. My brother got my house shot up. You know, my brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't want to tell all his stories because right. that's his life. But, like, we grew up in the same house. Yeah. Up in, you know what I'm saying? But, like, God orchestrated my life, you know, in a way to where, you know, the mistakes that he made caused me not to make some of those mistakes. Right. And to be honest, I'm on this side because sometimes I didn't get caught. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't get caught because I'm, I'm like a lot of the other kids growing up. Just very curious. I'm a latchkey kid. So yeah. my mom and daddy didn't come home until 7 or 30, you know what I'm saying, every yeah. day. You know, so, like, there was a lot of things that I did do that I just didn't get caught, you mm -hmm. know. And then when I did, I got arrested at 13. You know, I got arrested at 13. It really set me straight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, we used to hit licks. 
That's what we yeah. called it. We used to hit licks all the time. Yeah. And uh, I got arrested at 13. My brother took off. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got arrested. That just scared me straight. I started playing football. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I started playing football. But I didn't I didn't have a lot of those, you know what I'm saying, uh gangster moments. Right, right, right. And that's up. okay. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. And that, and uh, what people don't realize is that's more normal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. I find myself like some of these. I share my testimony, yeah. and it's real. Like it's a real testimony. Yeah, I got a little bit of gang banging. Yeah, I got a little bit of drugs here yeah. and there. Uh, maybe a lot of weed. All this, uh, a lot of chasing <laughs> women, yeah. doing, uh, you know, and that, going, I, having hey, sex. I was chasing the women. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but yeah, a little bit I of that. Football. Right. So like, so I wasn't like doing a, a whole bunch of killing. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was more of a lover. So yeah. like I can't. Re- but so when people are telling me all these crazy things i was moving a hundred thousand <laughs> kilos over can't. i didn't i can't relate to that <laughs> I, can't, can't I can't relate to, i didn't do that actually i didn't have money for that you know, you know what i mean i was i was too busy trying to like sell dime bags right, and right. like trying to sell a dime bag just so i could smoke me a bleasy out of it right right the closest i ever got to selling drugs was holding drugs <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, for somebody, somebody else <laughs> in my life yeah. you know what i'm saying like that's that's the closest i ever got to selling and there's drugs. probably people watching this right now like i was doing the same thing holding them i don't even do this right, I'm, now right, i'm in here forever right. <laughs> no <Locked up. laughs> hey but if you feel comfortable talking about that story yeah. about how willing you were oh, to yeah, get yeah, someone yeah. to come to church so i was uh so when i how was how old were you this was i had been like 20 21 oh, okay like 20 21 yeah, so okay i was in college at the time i was in college at the time yeah and uh at this point you know i had rededicated my life to christ yeah. You know, I already had my near death experience where I almost got shot. Mm. And so I rededicated my life. So we, we can come back to that. But yeah. like, I, I was back on fire, but I had roommates uh, at the time, a dude named Curtis. Curtizzi is what we called him. Curtizzi was a chiefer. I'm talking <laughs> about <laughs> every strand you can think of. That boy was, and he was in school for like chemistry or something like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was studying to be like a chemist, but he knew. So much about we our apartment smell like we all the time. If you and if anybody know, uh, Sun Watcher, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, our room, I think we was apartment three fourteen. <laughs> that mother was smelling like we all the time. And you already they're like, dang, I was his neighbor, <laughs> right? So like, but but everybody knew I didn't do none of that. I ain't, I ain't yeah. drink, I ain't smoke. Yeah, and um, but I was going to church. I was going to church, and he he would always ask me. That's one thing that's that, that's really key. He never stopped asking me to smoke weed. Mm. He never gave up on me. You feel me? <laughs> like you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like us as believers, like if somebody say no once, we like ah, damn. yeah. But he never stopped asking. He's like, bro, you want to hit this, bro? You want, bro? This this ain't that strong. Like yeah. he kept trying to convince me and da da da. And so I was that person at one point to a whole bunch of kids when I was like 17, 18. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. like kids not smoke when they 16. Yeah, I'm hanging out with little kids. I'd be like, bro, you want to hit this? It's good, yeah, man. I was such a freaking pure pressure yeah. guy. But this was one of my best friends at the time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like he going to ask me to, you know, say, hey, you want to indulge? You want to yeah. tap in? You know what I'm saying? So like one time I was like, bro, I, I'll do it if you come to church with me. <laughs> like seriously. Yeah. I was like, I'll do it if you come to church with me. And I think it was some... I don't know. It felt like mid. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I, I smoked, and he came to church with me. That's cool. You didn't come to church. I, I wouldn't recommend that. Right. You know what don't saying? don't like, be doing this <laughs> just to get people I've, to come to church. I have never done that again. I Ever. Never do that yeah, again. never again. But I thought that was a funny story when yeah. you told me. And what's cool about you, bro, is that you're an open book. You're real, sure. like, like, you don't got to hide nothing like we right. we all do some crazy stuff some crazy right stuff, and that was yeah. crazy that was crazy but it was uh but it was like you really wanted to come to church you loved I him did. you're like i yeah. was running a smoke <laughs> I, you know so you don't feel out of place right. i'm gonna smoke with you yeah. so you know that i just smoked with you last night yeah. and now we going to church today and we both feel the same way right. okay <laughs> okay so you don't have to feel alone here you right. come into church plant that little seed hopefully yeah. you know that that gets watered one day and, yeah. and he comes to christ yeah, preferably. Yeah, yeah. Preferably, yeah, cool. But yeah, man. So yeah, your your story. We kind of been bouncing all over the place, but you did say that you almost got shot. I did, bro. Me, me. Ain't like that crazy? what? Uh, what happened here? It's crazy. So uh, I play. I started playing football in high school, in middle school, or PB league. I played football. That's really what kind of saved me. Yeah, from the and you was cold at football from what good, you told brother. me. I was good. Nice. I probably seen you a clip, so you can put it right here. Okay, well, was, let's play it real quick. There you go. Ooh. 
Dang, you was moving. I was, wasn't yeah. I? But, like, um, I started playing sports and uh, ended up getting a, a football scholarship to play in college. Okay. So that's I went to college in Wichita Falls. And um, if you know anything about sports, it's a brotherhood. Mm. You know, it's it's, it's likened to a gang. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'll ride and die for these guys. Yeah. I'm going out to battle every, you know what I'm saying, day with the, every weekend every with weekend. these guys. And, and during so, practice. And during practice. Facts, you know. And so um, at, after the games, we always hitting up the party. We going to the parties after the games. We'll do, we'll, we had just won. It's a big game, probably homecoming or something. And um, we go to the party, and it's lit. You know, people, you know, vibing out, da 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 And a fight break out. You know what I'm saying? A fight break out, and one of the people fighting was a football player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, again, like I said, it's a brotherhood. If one fight, we all fight, you know. And so that's how football players operate. If you know any football players, if you in jail and you used to be a football player, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If one fight, we fight. One swing, we all swing. So we are all in there fighting. We just fighting in this club, yeah. fighting in the club. And then the fight moves to the parking lot. And that's then you know that's when it get dangerous, mm -hmm. when the fight moves to the parking lot. Because the fight moves to the parking lot. And uh, me, this dude named Robbie Lee, we sitting on the on this car right here. The fight dying down. A black SUV pull up right beside us. And he just the dude tall. He's about as tall as you. You know what I'm saying? He, he tall. And he jump out and he just pointed a gun right in my face. I was like, I froze. I don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? But he he pointed the gun right in my face. And the guy that's standing right next to me, he slapped it out of his hand. He said, put that down. Hit, hit the ground and went off. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, you know, I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. What am I what am I doing? Like what am, what why am I out here and putting myself in this scenario and situation? And don't was, you hate when you have to get into that position? Like for me, like I people would tell me, don't do this, don't do that. And I would like not listen. I always was a person that had to learn from my own mistakes. Yeah. And then someone to listen from. And then this in there a scripture that says a, a fool listens to uh, learns from his own mistakes, but a wise person yeah. learns learns from the mistakes of others. Yeah. And so that that sounds like you know I know I bet there's people locked up watching this or even people that are just not locked up watching this and they they're like dang I put myself in a mess right now and I should have yeah. listened. Yeah. Facts. You know. That's true, and and that was a scenario where you know I had to listen because at this point I, I think I'm a, a junior at the time, and uh, you know I had gotten used to the life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I got used to the life, so you. So the really friends that me. were like just influencing you to kind of do some wrong things here and even, there. It really wasn't even that. You know, I was I was fully backslidden. Like mm. I wasn't like I wasn't like a church boy. At this point, you at was just kind of like the fully, prodigal son. Yeah, I was I was engaged yeah. in the party. I wasn't drinking, but I was right. trying to smash everything that yeah. the, that would allow. You yeah. feel me? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I, that was kind of my vice. And so I was at the party. I was at the club. I was getting numbers. I was dancing, doing all of that. Yeah. And so I was fully invested in that world. And that that one night, you know what I'm saying? That one night kind of like shook me. You know what I'm saying? And so like I the next Sunday, I went to the local church. You know what I'm saying? Uh, rededicated my life. Praise Danny God. Young Baptist Church. In Wichita Falls. Is that where your mom still goes? No. I'm, oh, is this a whole different church? Yeah, this is in college. This is like oh, a college okay. church. Uh, it's a church in Wichita Falls where the college was. Wow. Yeah, so I went there, rededicated my life, and then um, slowly started to, you know, change up things. Yeah. You know, my friends can tell, like, I wasn't the same kind of guy that I used right. to be. You know, uh, found the love of my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shortly thereafter. You know, we had some highs and lows, some yeah. bumps and stuff like that. And then, uh, well, you have a beautiful family. Thank you, brother. But let's bounce back to where, like, yeah, you gave your life to Christ, but you didn't switch over to Christ 100% because, you know, a lot of people like to think that when you come to Christ, you're going to be perfect right away, Facts. which is not the case. Facts. You don't just do one set of sit-ups when you're fat right. and get six packs. You Facts. have to put in that work, oh, yeah. but it also takes time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of things that you may not know about yourself, especially if you've been doing drugs all your life. Let's just say, say for me, it took me a lot of time to finally start uh, getting uh, my mind to be in a normal place after doing drugs of being right. sober to actually understand myself yeah. to uh, start understanding how my mind works how my mentality is and learn about myself so 
that takes time. Not only that, uh, you know, there were some things that I was having a hard time letting go. I didn't yeah. know, like, how to let go. I didn't know how to walk in Christ. When I first came to Christ, I didn't have people that were showing me how to walk, you right. know, or they weren't teaching me, you know, yeah. like, so, you know, it, it, it's everybody has a different process. Yeah, sometimes uh, people can let go of those things right away. Praise God. Praise God. And I, yeah, there were some things that I let go, let go right away, you know, but there were some things that took a little bit more time, you know, and yeah. so that's what's so awesome about God's grace and mercy is mm -hmm. that he doesn't... Um, uh, just give up on us after our first mistake. Yeah, you know he keeps on push. He keeps on saying, "Get back up, son. Back I got up. your back." You know, no matter what. And he's just so rich in mercy. And yeah, uh, I and I think that right there helps us build a love for him that makes us want to continue to serve him more and more. Yeah, because of that constant, unfailing forgiveness that he always gives. Facts, very true. I I, I can think back on many times where. I'm like, God, I'm sorry again. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> like, God, I'm sorry again. God, yeah. I messed up again. You know, and he didn't shut the door on me. Mm. You know, he embraced me with open arms and gave me another chance. And that's the same mentality that I use in raising my kids mm. you know, and, and how I treat my wife, you know, and how I treat others. You know, God gave me second, third, yeah. fourth, fifth chance. I got this lyric. It was like, you know the industry. The, the industry made it clear I'm not their cup of tea. Probably because I rock with liars, snakes, and those abilities. Yeah. Some people need a second chance. Where I need a 17. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it's like that's the that. it's like empathy. You know what I'm saying? It's empathy um, for for somebody who has made mistakes. I'm proof of life after bad decisions. You're yeah. proof of life after bad decisions. You know um, some some people are the victim. You know, some people are the 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 one who uh, gets hurt, but some people are the one who hurt. Yeah. And I've been the one who hurt. I've been the one to do both. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> straight up. Yeah, me too. But for the mo most yeah. of my most of my life, I've been the one. You know, whether it be through manipulation or whatever the case is. You know, I ain't never hurt nobody like physically, but like you know, with my actions. You know, yeah. I definitely have been like the the one who inflicted the pain yeah. that somebody has has to live through. So, so I think about, you know, the exa the example I'm setting for my son. Yeah. You know, Oof. I got two of them now. I think about that example. It's like, you know, how how do I want to see him treat how do I want him to see me treat his mom? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like how how do, how do I want that to play out? And also their salvation as well is is hanging in the balance. You know, if I'm saying that I'm this man of God, you feel me? I'm saying I'm this man of God. I'm saying that I'm all these things. I'm walking in integrity, but then I'm actually not. You know? Then they're looking like, well, is the God that he serves real? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because he's not even, like, like he's saying this, yeah. but he's doing another thing, you know? And so, like, all those things run through my mind now. So I'm like, God, never let me forget the feeling. Yeah. Never let me forget the feeling of having to beg for, for forgiveness. Never let me forget the feeling of, of what that felt like to hurt somebody else because now when I'm in those situations, when temptation does arise, mm -hmm. I can get that feeling like, you know what? It's not worth it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? We overcome the blood of the land, the power of our testimony. God, you already brought me through this. Mm -hmm. God, you already brought me over this hurdle. And not only that, just thinking that this can take me to hell. Oh, 1,000%. You know not what I mean? Not only you, but the, the, somebody yeah. else. Too. Yeah. You can damage somebody else's salvation. Yeah. Why would I want to damage anybody's salvation, Facts. you know, or myself? Like, it's just not worth it. Yeah, like, right. and the devil always, he tries to keep us blind from that thought. <laughs> yeah. That does. thought, like, <laughs> hey, he doesn't want you to think that, hey, you could go to hell when you do this, right. but you'll be okay. Right. Like, he doesn't do that. He really hides like that in the back, back of your mind, doesn't he? Because it's the reality, and that's the big biggest reality of it Facts. all i remember being a kid and being so freaking scared after like committing the big sin or whatever yeah like because i remember the bible verse says the wages of sin is death yeah you know and so <clears> after <throat> i committed the sin i just knew i was gonna die but then i didn't and so i did it again and i didn't die mm. I did it again and i didn't die and i didn't die and i didn't die and so it, i became numb and that's what happened to a lot of us we become numb to sin you know, because we do it and we don't die. But what that's really saying is the sum total of sin equals death. Eventually, you're leading path a, a path of destruction, you know. And I didn't realize that at the beginning. At the beginning, I was thinking, you sin once, you're supposed to die. But that's not how God works. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. So we became, I became numb to it. And so now I would just do it. That's why the Bible talks about a reprobate mind. You know, you you are given over to this thought. You're given over to your mind being shifted. Amen. You don't even think that this sin is going to affect you or hurt you anymore. Yeah. You know, because you don't get that and that's second scary. side of the equation. It's very it's scary. Very scary because now you're in a place where you don't feel conviction. Right. Um, and then, you know, when, when you're hearing those thoughts, the word of God, the wages of sin is death. And when you're thinking, if I do this sin, am I going to die? And maybe at that moment, yeah. you didn't die physically, right. but something deep down oh, your facts. spirit died, right? Yes. And, you know... I uh, was tempted recently uh, for something, and it's personal, but I overcame the temptation right. through having conviction. Yeah. But having that conviction um, blessed me. Yeah. I was because there's many I've made so many mistakes after knowing God that sometimes ASAP preach question questions his salvation. Yeah. And and I'm gonna be real with you. But when I felt that conviction, mm. I was just like, thank you, Lord, for reminding me yeah. and showing me that you still love me, that you, there, your Holy Spirit still lives within me. Facts. Because many times we all feel like, where is God? Yeah. Where is he? How do I? I don't feel him lately. He's he's hiding behind the scenes right now. <laughs> yeah. he, where is he? He's gone. Yeah. But when I felt that conviction, yeah. something just just made me feel so loved yeah, and, and i and i and not only that that a love for god like oh wow mm. your love is so unfailing that after everything i've done and you still choose to give me conviction right, right like how what kind of feeling am i feeling over here in my mind i'm thanking god for conviction yeah. but it says in the bible god corrects those who he loves right. and so when i felt the conviction i felt the correction and i felt his love and so it just made me just want to just be appreciate appreciative towards the whole holy spirit and god that's, that's beautiful god, yeah that always provides a way to escape yeah you know what i'm saying in that conviction that was what that was what it was for you. Yeah. He's like, oh, dang. You know what? I need to stop. <laughs> yeah, that was start. And, and and it made me feel good. Like, okay, I'm still saved. Facts. Thank you, Lord. Like <laughs> You're still here I, with now, me. now I got confidence yeah, yeah, to yeah. keep going. Yeah. Now Facts. I can get back up because there's no other feeling yeah. in the whole world. I don't care if it whatever uh, if it's a million dollars, billions of dollars, there's yeah. no other feeling than knowing that you are right in God's eyes. Facts. Man. Yeah. And it's just the most amazing feeling, and I I, I appreciate that from the, from God, man. He's Jesus Christ is the best thing that ever happened to me, and you know we have a a crazy relationship, yeah. You know through all the mistakes that I made after knowing Him, but you know He's just such a faithful friend, yeah. And I'm a, appreciative uh, of that. Man, we got some uh, things <laughs> that we're working on in the future, music yeah. wise. Oh, yeah. uh, you're gonna see Adrian Butler. We're going to be doing some recap videos. You might actually see him at a couple of these prison events that we got going on. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, just knowing that I got my boy, we re rocking God made together, <laughs> it just made me turn, bro. I got to give me a wooden chain. I, I can't do uh, the oh, diamonds, no. bro. I can't do the diamonds. Nah, you know you want the diamonds. I know, you said I, I would get, if I. Uh, you, give me like a wooden. Give with me a the, wooden with the, remember the big uh, African beads? The, I'm gonna get you the big old African beats that go down to your belly button. I can't do like that. Like back in the day. We used to all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a weird, weird time and era where like <laughs> Christian rappers wanted to be modest in a way. Yeah. We didn't want to wear no chains <laughs> and we just wore these big African right, beats. Big old thick African and beads. some of them had like little bling on it. Yeah. It was like, what are we doing? Yeah. We used to wear them wooden Jesus pieces. Yeah, wooden <laughs> Jesus pieces were popular. They were like right there next to the diamonds in the Facts. little middle of the mall stores. We like, I want those. Yeah, bro. What were we thinking, bro? Yeah, deep V necks. A deep V necks. You still man. rocking the V necks? I know. I'm just kidding. Don't let heaven alone. Bro. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, we was always camo. I mean, this is yeah, like Drake and Lil Wayne era. Oh, fact. You know what I'm saying? And me and him, to be honest, we felt like the Drake and Lil yeah. Wayne of CHH back in the Facts. day. Facts. It was like we was hitting every single show. We, our yeah. songs ha had the Lil Wayne vibes yeah. to them. You know what I mean? <laughs> I follow. We was just going <laughs> Lil Wayne. Like, <laughs> yeah. I liked Drake, but at the time, you know, in a way, like I liked his flow because he was still new at the time. <laughs> yeah. But Lil Wayne was rocking the show. So, like, we, no matter what, if you was Christian rap or not, 
um, you know, there was potential of you being like influenced by oh, Lil yeah. Wayne's oh, yeah. f- flows, his music, yeah. his beats, and you know, he he is a, definitely a big influence to the like, culture. See, I missed the whole, I missed the whole one one six move because I was in college. Mm. I was in college, like I said, backslid. So like, this is the same time Lecrae was going crazy. So I missed all of that. So while they, everybody was listening to you know one one six, that was Christian. I was listening to Juvenile, Lil Wayne. Turk, BG, you know what I'm saying, DSR, uh, Swisher House. Yeah. You know, I was listening to Kanye. I was listening to all, like, unreleased mixtapes. Well, I was listening like to that. that stuff before Lil Wayne, though, too. Yeah. So when I first started, it was, it was, com- it was like, Chameleon Air was a big part. Paul like Chameleon Air. Yeah, sure. not really Paul Wall too much, yeah. believe it or not. I, Chameleon Air just had that lyricism that yeah, I liked and that yeah, punch yeah. in his voice. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it, but... You know, after it was DSR. DSR. I'ma sure. do some bad. bad now I'ma do some. I'ma do some good to you. Yeah. Uh, we <laughs> might use a, we, use a soul. <laughs> use a what? Use a holy soul. Use a beautiful soul. <laughs> you know, everybody watching this know that song. We gotta do a Christian remix to this. Uh, we don't. We don't have I know to. we don't. <laughs> we good though. We we, we definitely could, but it's just what are we gonna do? Like compliment people in the song that just sounds so like you about to hit them over the head with a church pew. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would do something. Good <laughs> to you. I'm a good something good to you. Hey, use a beautiful oh, song. Yeah, meet me at the church in the middle of the road. <laughs> On the front row. <laughs> oh, my God. We had a church in the pew front row. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's it. We just wrote a hit. Yeah, man. we did. Everybody copywritten. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but, yeah, we was turning up back then. Bro, back in the day, I remember when uh, Tum Tum came to the Club yeah. Chrome. Yeah. And at this play at Club Chrome, I had a name for myself when I was going there. <laughs> Do they know your name already? Yeah, they know me oh, okay. as Chigamane back Chigamane. in the day. Okay. And people yeah. have written me said, "Hey, I think I seen you at Club Chrome." Right I was there. like, "Man, that's crazy." <laughs> but I used to wear the stunner shades like with that and had writing on it like Soldier Boy. <laughs> Big Soldier. Yeah, for real, for real. And um, but I remember when Tum Tum came and Fat Bastard showed up. Like I was just. I was like that white dude at, at this, yeah. you know, this African American club. Everybody black, er, and I'm the only white guy. A couple yeah. of Mexicans here and there, <laughs> but I'm like the only white dude turning up, knowing every single word to that yeah. song. And and I could just remember Tum Tum. He got them big old shades on. He just looking straight at me with a smile, like he just <laughs> like, I he he enjoyed me yeah. performing yeah. his song to him. <laughs> it was cool. It was cool, but, uh, you know, even then I was like, man, you know, I was hoping to get into the mix of those type of artists. You know, I was hoping to grow, you know, because I always had music in my heart. I wanted to do that. That's why I was just trying to be as make a big name for myself at Mm -hmm. Club Crone because I knew that I wanted to be like a famous hip hop artist. Yeah. But, uh, you know, all all that all that chasing the money, all of that is actually just a whole bunch of fake promises that the enemy likes to offer. I am so, like, look at me now, bro. Like, there's no way. You know what I find is that everybody wants to be a secular artist. A lot of them don't go nowhere. Yeah, a lot of them. You know what I mean? I could have been one of them. Yeah. That just never gone nowhere and stayed in, ended up being in a trailer park, in jail, shot, killed, because a lot of my friends did happen that happened too. Yeah. And but you know God blessed me. He said, you know what, my way is better than what mm-hmm. your way says. Yeah. And now look at me. I'm just like all all in all humility. You know God has just given me so much. I yeah. have a lot to lose. Yeah. You know I hate to say that. You know yeah. it sounds kind of like oh well I, I have a lot of stuff, but He's given me everything that I need to yeah. do ministry. He's given me everything I need to provide for my family. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you know He is completely. You know I'm not completely rich or anything like that but you know he sustains me and my family you know family is sick so i'm just so grateful you know that he like i told the lord i was like lord you don't have to give me a mansion you don't have to give me that if you did thank you but if not (laughs) right (laughs) but if he but if he doesn't i'm okay yeah i'm okay with whatever he does he's the god that giveth and taketh taketh 
taketh. Taketh. Taketh away. Uh, yeah. And so. Um, we could say takes. Yeah. He ta- he he. Ta- I know. We over here doing <laughs> old King James out the hood. <laughs> He's the one that gives and takes away. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for whatever God wants us to do, because ultimately, no matter where we go in life, whether yeah. he takes away, he gives. All things work together yeah. for the good of those who love God and called according to his purpose. Yeah. But what's really cool about me and you is that our sons are the same age. Yeah. They yeah. both want to make music. Facts. You know, Facts. your son makes even beats. Yeah. What's cool about even Rectify, Rectify's son is our son's age. And I he's know. making beats. And I, and I was hearing him out there in North Carolina. His little boy Killing has little him. vocals. Like, he wow. can sing like Rectify can. That's fine. And I was just like, dang. You know what I'm saying? I got to get my son in the studio, <laughs> like, for real. Because, you know, we my, my son wants to do it. Yeah. But there was a season about, like, a year ago yeah. where he was having a hard time pronouncing his words. Mm-hmm. And he would get frustrated me uh, frustrated with me when I would tell him to rap a certain way. Yeah. And then, but now he's able to actually, like, hot stove. He knows that song word for word. Hey, and so, on. like, I'm like, okay, I will write, I will rap your song, yeah. uh, rap your verse, and then you rap mm-hmm. what I do, did over it, and that'll be your verse. Is well, that how you do it sometimes? Yeah, so I do, uh, with my son, I'll put him in the studio, but I'll rap the line, leave a space, rap the line, leave a space, rap mm-hmm. the line. Leave. So if, this, if the song is supposed to go, a B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. That's what I want him to say. I'll say A B, and then he'll say A B C D C D E F E F G G. I don't get it. And so then I'll take all his takes. Yeah. So you know, like you got the wave files. Yeah. My wave file is up here, and I'm saying A B C D E F. G- and so he'll he say a, a B yeah C so D A B C D C D E F and then you'll move them all together move them all together then it sound like A B C D E F G oh nice yeah so that's what I do with him man that's pretty good that's clever yeah so, how'd you how'd you get that to like work so like you just practice with them yeah and... so like I noticed that they could they could mimic me good mm. both my kids they could mimic me so like kind of like your son yeah like if I'm saying something they can say it. But a lot of times you get them in the studio, you know, and they didn't they they don't have the right rhythm on or what you're trying to get them to say. And so I was like, just say this after me. So I say it, and they'll say it. And I was like, you know what? Let's try it. So I just tried it. Yeah, and that just worked. And Aub- Audrey, yeah, she uh, can sing. Yeah, for real, she cold with it. Yeah, she can sing. She be singing a little bit. Yeah, time. she's and then is she in like singing class too? Like I so, thought I saw a video of like them. Yeah, so my dad, my dad is uh like I said, I grew up in a church family, musical family. Yeah, and so my dad plays all the instruments, and so he teaches on piano. Both my kids piano, uh, vocal lessons for my daughter. So like, yeah, brother. What I want to do. Like a goal is to have Yeet, Brother Bo, Sean, you, and also we have a new artist uh, and minister that's in God made too. His name is Seven, Dope. and he's out in North Carolina. And this so, one I, of the sevens, brother. yeah, the, this one's uh, Seven S E V E N. Gotcha. Streets need faith. Yeah, and on social media, he has a pretty good uh, size following. Um, he just a really dope dude. Like yeah. he's not just a rapper. He yeah. just and he's not like the best rapper in the whole world. Like we're not all the best rappers in the whole world. We just we you know this heart. We got the same heartbeat. Yeah. And um, if we was all together, I think that would be sick. But maybe get like you know if there's any sponsors or people out there that want to sew into the ministry, we could do probably two more cameras and a couple more mics. Mm-hmm. Probably a new put little us all road. Right here. yeah. Put us right here because. You know, um, the nonprofit will be established probably within the next week or two, 100%. Mm-hmm. It's already being, we're just waiting for the IRS to approve it. And so when the nonprofit's there, then we can have um, donations and, and stuff to go towards this. And I think that would be a blessing because, yeah, we're not only doing podcasts. We're going really out here yeah. in these streets, like, um, doing these concerts for, yeah. uh, for the recovery scene. Like, when we did... Bandera this weekend, there was probably about 200, 300 God, people. But when we did altar call, it felt like f- um, when I asked people to like throw up their hands if you want to accept Jesus in your life, it literally looked like 
eighty percent of the people threw up their hands and dedicated their life to Christ. Yeah. And I was like, hey, you know, mm-hmm. I, I got some work down there at the altar now. Yeah. I got to get down there and start praying for people. But we really out there, and we 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 did, and it was more of like a a children youth mm-hmm. turnout. It yeah. seemed like yeah, a whole bunch of people from the recovery scene came out. But the youth were the ones that wanted to get baptized. That's dope. Man. All of them wanted, all the kids wanted to come get baptized. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, this was different. Yeah. Lord moved in a different way. At one point, I was like, on one of the songs, I had every single kid come up on stage. <laughs> Here's a picture right here. <laughs> but they was just like turning up on stage. And uh, and I, they kept on bugging me, like, can we come on stage? I was like, okay, one song. One Everybody song. come up here. Let's go. <laughs> And it was it, it was really cool. It was kind of awkward though, yeah. because they were like a lot of the crowd. Yeah. And so when they came on the, on the stage, yeah. like the crowd was kind of like not even there. It, yeah. it was just all parents just all right. with their phones, right. just. <laughs> and I was like, y'all, I, I need y'all to turn up. I need y'all it's to the turn people up. in the crowd that get me hyped yeah. more than yeah. the people that are on the stage. I Thanks. could be on stage by myself Thanks. and t- and turn up crazy if people are turning up in the crowd. Yeah, Thanks. but when they're on stage with me, it's cool and all. But it's just like I don't know, <laughs> it's right, you know. Yeah. But it was an awesome experience for yeah. the kids. Probably they're probably forever, and they're the next generation. Oh, yeah, yeah, we want to minister to people our age and get them to like us or whatever but ultimately these kids are going to grow up and always remember us and i think it's really important to pour yeah. into the youth it's it's artists you know <clears throat> since we've been doing it for a minute you know it's artists that were like born in like the early 2000s that'll come up to me and be like hey bro i remember you from youth camp like you rapped at my youth camp in 2014. Wow. And now they now they're a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like now they're a Christian rapper on yeah. top of that. And so it was like, man, you really like showed me that this was possible. And that's really what it is. You know, like for me, uh I grew up, like I said, I grew up in church and a lot of the times I couldn't connect with what I saw on stage cuz none of it looked like me and it sounded like me, you know, like I can't play no instruments, none of that. Me neither. You know what I'm saying? So like it was hard for me to connect. You know, and so a lot of times just seeing somebody who loves God and also loves rap changes the world for you. Mm. Like, dang, you know, I could love God and rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so now, you know, a lot of people are digging in. Christian rap is bigger than it's ever been. Ever been. You know, people of We're kind of like OG. Lost. Like, have you had people call you OG yet? Not yet, but Bro, it's people have coming. been calling me OG already. <laughs> Not yet, but And I'd be feeling like, ah, I guess so. Like, <laughs> if if you're going to respect... Uh, it's, it has a form of respect, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's not the respect that I want because I still feel 17. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, man, uh, that's pretty crazy. Like, we, we, we just, you know, these kids are growing up and... And, and listening to our our music right now, and yeah. one day we're gonna have to pass the torch. Yeah, I'm not ready. Yeah. I think what well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if pass the torch is is the um, is what we'll be doing. I think. I think. I think about people like like um, Moses or people like Abraham. People like you know all these people in the Bible. God wasn't done with them until they're late, 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 late. Yeah, you know, and he still had things. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, I'm talking about like Christian rap. There might be a place we don't know yet, though. Yeah, right. Because the genre it's growing. Is young. It's exactly. yeah. The, the genre is young, so yeah. we could be somebody that can continue to do this at 55, yeah. 60 years old. Yeah. It might look goofy. No, I don't think so. We'll we'll see, right? Because like with Eagles, me, the Beatles, at that Eagles, point, I may be bald. Saying. You might be. You know what I mean? With little scabs on my head. You know how, like, just old people have all that? Like, I don't know what that means, but I just I, hope. I think, I think if we try to hold on to this image that we have now yeah, in, in 30, 40 years, then it's going to look Did weird. you do the, the, the aging app? Uh-uh. You never did oh, that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What did you yeah. think? I mean, man, I looked horrible. I looked super old. That's why I probably ain't never posted. Yeah, you know, like, like, I hey. couldn't imagine that. With, yeah. like, a jersey or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? I think we'll have to age with our demo. I think I'm all definitely always preaching the gospel. Facts. Always going to have a mic in my hand. Always going to have a platform yeah. in some sort of way. <laughs> I, You know, but I we never know how this is going to age with CHH. Facts. But we do know that actors 
last longer than hip hop artists do. Yeah. So far. So far. Yeah. So yeah. like, um, so the maybe genre, we want to genre so young. Yeah. Man. We might want to dabble into doing some Christian movies. You yeah. know, I'm pretty cool you with doing what, that uh, type of stuff. You are, bro. You you definitely you definitely should get into Christian movies, <laughs> brother, because you definitely have a director's eye. Thank you. You know, but like. I even want to get into like creating platforms for other people, so like festivals and mm. you know stuff like that, stuff that like draws a lot of people out, you know. But is an opportunity to showcase, you know, like you said, some of the young up and coming guys, yeah. you know, who don't necessarily know how to put a show together, who don't know how to do this, and do that, you know, even like work. Your son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then that's what's really cool about what we have right now in the platform that we're building is that one day we may pass the torch to our children. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to it if that's what he wants to do, Maybe. which I'm hoping. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I will force it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh but you know, he so far there's no force in it. He just wants yeah. to do it anyways. That's dope. Uh but he is a uh, he is a uh, he wants to follow the footsteps for real. So we're gonna probably like you know, I have all the equipment for him. So whenever he's ready, yeah. you know, he'll be hitting the stage. That's why I, I got this song with him on it, but he's only on the ad libs. Is he on straight up? Was that what it is? No, he was he just, just in, in he was, yeah, he's just in the video. Oh, okay. I hope y'all like that movie straight up. That thing was I'm crazy. Bad, that thing's been going pretty crazy on the, in the free world, but in the, in the, in the, in the, behind the bars, I think it got like 350,000 views it's since I dropped it. It's amazing. So let's drop a uh, fall. We'll probably drop fall. Um, let's go ahead and drop that like within a couple of days after dropping this podcast. So fall is a really powerful music video, and I think y'all will really rock with that thing. It, it's it's definitely if you listen to my if I end up dropping stuff that is a little bit old, you might uh, hear a difference in the sound quality of my songs and maybe my voice because. I really don't feel like I found my voice until about four or five years ago. Yeah. So I've been, if you go through all my albums, which I got like 12 albums out in the world, um, then you're going to just hear all different types of voices. And I was just trying to find the best voice that fits me. And then I finally found a voice that's more natural and I don't have to try harder. It just, it, it's just more vibey. I, I, I found out how to be more melodic with my flows and I just stuck to it and I'm good where I'm at. But and then even like finding ways to make my voice more smoother. So if you hear songs that I drop on there and you're like, man, his voice sounds real raspy. I was in the process of just trying to figure it out, y'all. But yeah. the songs are, yeah. <laughs> but I was, the songs are still so incredible, and they they minister to people, keep people from committing suicide, and Max. it's it's uh you know all glory to God. Amen. I just critique myself so much. One thing about me in this studio is that I am super, super, uh, just a big old perfectionist. I really yeah. just try to take my time and, and do this. And I think you're a really, really big perfectionist. That's why you haven't even dropped an album. Yeah. We need to get one done, though. Maybe. Yeah, Lord Maybe. willing, right? I'm not going to force you. But I, we, I need to get an album done for you. <laughs> no. Nah. But I, I do, we got some, I really do wish you would drop an album. I think that would yeah. be so cool. I think people, I think it's time. Yeah, it's just expensive to do an album, a full a full album. What, what What's so expensive about it? So, you know, you, like, especially nowadays, like, getting a producer to produce a full album. Okay, project, so exclusives, right? Exclusives. So a lot, a lot of the beats that you have and the songs that you have are not exclusives? No, almost all of my songs YouTube's. are exclusive. No. Almost, oh. almost every one of my Okay, songs so that's not a problem then. Yeah. Okay, so we're we're past that. Yeah. We're past the ex, ex, uh, expensive yeah, part. Okay, yeah, so I'm now we're, we're, what no, are you no, saying? No, what I'm, no, what I'm saying okay. is getting all uh, 12 new exclusives is what I'm saying. Okay, so you don't want none of the old stuff I anymore. Think I, I think I want to start new. Yeah. Start, start fresh. New, I'm in a different place in my life. <laughs> I feel you. Than all of them. But right now you. we're in the middle of, of dropping new music like every week. I know we are. So we're like like seven or eight weeks straight I've dropped the song. Wow. You know, so um, And I've been seeing you grinding definitely. Yeah, brother. You got a song with Bryce and Gray too. Yeah, I got a song with Bryce and Gray. <coughs> and you got a music video. Week. How's it doing? It's doing well. It's Good. It's doing well. It's doing well. So uh Bryce and Gray went crazy. Yeah, I like yeah. I think he, he he be rapping for real. Right. Yeah. But I, uh, I only had one really good conversation with him and I was surprised at how down to earth he was. Um, and relatable, you know. I was I was pretty surprised about it, cause it, it, like online you just kind of see like the stuff people say. Yeah. And so I, I wasn't really sure, you know. I wasn't sure about doing a song, bro. 
I wasn't sure about doing the song, and um, uh, but I rock with DJ Yvonne because he's another one of those outcast people who needed a lot of chances. A lot of people said no to him because he's this or he's that. He's eccentric. Yeah. And so I kind of rock with those people. I was that way in high school, and so I rock with Yvonne. So um, I did the song. Shout out to Yvonne. Shout out to Yvonne, brother. You know, shout out to my. How, DJ how, how was the uh, the tour? The tour was it was dope. <laughs> it was a. Uh, a lot of learning along the tour. It's probably about 10 to, I think the max we had was like 25 people wow. one night. Uh, but the rest of them were like 5, 10. I didn't do every stop. I only did uh, Tyler and Fort Worth. Okay. Uh, but they did some of the other stops. But I thought it was really cool to see people actually come. You know, they, they came out. This wasn't one of those, hey, buy into the tour. It wasn't one of those, hey, built-in audiences. It was legit, like, we coming. These are the people. Come. You know what I'm saying? And so it was cool to see that. And then it was also cool to pour into the a lot of the younger artists and younger acts that were on it and just kind of encourage them because a lot of them were getting discouraged because of the turnout. But after each show, blown away by the impact. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I was telling them, bro, I've been in front of stages of 10,000, 20,000 people. And I've also been in front of the stages of two people. All I'm after is impact. Mm -hmm. All I'm after is to give God glory. If somebody walks away from this, no matter if it's one person or a thousand people, I've done my job, you know, and I see the fruit of that. And so just kind of pouring that into them and letting them know it's not about the number. It's not about how your, your Instagram highlight reel that you finna post and, this, that, and the third. No, it's about impact. Yeah. Did somebody get closer to God that day? Was a chain broken that day? Did somebody accept Christ that day? And if your answer is yes to those things, you did your job. Yeah, and only God knows. So you just got to continue to just sow them seeds. Facts. And I know you're doing that, you know what I'm saying, because the word of God never comes back void. Facts. So if the, the word of God was preached, you did yeah. your thing. did your thing, brother. This is the part in the podcast that I usually ask my guests to kind of look at that camera right over there and just give some encouragement, whatever God's putting on your heart to talk to somebody about. Yeah. Um, I, I do kind of want to share this and maybe this is something that's just, just been on my, on my spirit for, you know, the past maybe month or so is, you know, dealing with purpose and why, you know, I, I know I was in a season of asking God, why this? Why did you allow this to happen? You know, um, why did you allow me to go through this or my family to go through this or so-and-so to get sick or so-and-so to die? Because I've had, I've had family men- members battle cancer. I've had family members uh, be murdered uh, it, uh, through gang activity, through drug activity. I've had family members lose everything. You know, I've had, you know, a lot of loss, a lot of pain, you know, in my life that, I've endured vicariously through my family and even in my own household. And uh, there's a lot of whys that I, that was surfing around. And um, and so I questioned God a lot, like, why, why, why? And one thing he kept telling me was just wait. And it didn't make sense to me for a long time. And he just kept saying, just wait, just wait wait and I will reveal it all to you and over time slowly over time especially in these last three or four months God has been bringing people in my life that are directly affected by my life story you know and he's answering in a way that's been so strong that it's like reminding me of those seasons where I was questioning my mom beat cancer you know but I remember feeling like the world was over when she got the diagnosis you know i remember feeling like god why would you take my mom bro like like why would you take the, my rock you know and he's like just wait and now she's on the other side of that and now if when i run into somebody whose mom is in that same scenario i can share you know how he came through for me I can share how he he stepped in on my behalf and how he is a healer, he is a restorer, he is a way maker. And these are things that I, I wasn't in a place to say in the middle of that storm. 
And so now one thing I carry with me in the storm, out of the storm, he is a way maker. In the storm, out of the storm, he is a healer. In the storm, out of the storm, he is a provider. In the storm, out of the storm, he is God. He is in control of the things that we cannot control. God is God. And and so now I'm like Peter. I'm able to do the miraculous because I've got my eyes focused on him and not focused on the storm, not focused on the winds and the waves. Now I'm able, that's, that's, that's my thing for you. You know, there's things in your life that you're battling. There's things in your life, there's questions that you may have. You might be in the middle of a storm right now. You might be in the middle of a circumstance right now and it's grabbing your attention. Mm. It's taking your attention away and your focus off of God. And you realizing that you're sinking. But just like Peter, God has not left you. God has not left you, and he'll be there to reach down and pick you up. He just needs you to focus Mm. on him. You know, he needs you to focus on him in the midst of the storm. You know, while things are going out of control, while havoc is happening all over you, while things are going crazy and in Mm. disarray, he needs you to focus I know it seems hard to do, especially while you're in it and you live in it. But trust me, trust me, if you do it, you'll be able to do the miraculous. You'll look back and be like, I can't believe I got through that season. Yeah. I can't believe that I got through that pain, or through that stress. I know that you, I'm not the only one who feels like that. There are things in my life that there's no way I should have lived through. I've been in car wrecks, got a six car pile up, car flipped over, broken rear, broken nose. There's no way I should have lived through that. But I did All because of God's grace Thank you Lord Yeah man I love that You know and that kind of goes along with what I wanted to share Is that if you go through the scriptures One of the most like uh, One of the words that God likes to speak a lot in the scripture Is fear not Hmm. A lot of uh, the times when we go through a trial or tribulation or, Or a circumstance in our life the enemy likes to bring fear, and fear doesn't do anything. Right. We It just wastes time. It gets us thinking of things that may not even happen. But when you would just have faith, and he says, fear not, believe, for I am with you. And if you just hold on to that, because if you just have God, no matter what you're going through, you're going to be okay, um, because he looks after his children. Nice. And so... If you're having fear and you're having anxiety, whatever that may be in your life, you need to just not focus on that. Like he said, focus on Jesus. Mm-hmm. The waves may be crashing around you like Peter. And he, and once you focus on focus on these waves, yeah, those, those waves may make you sink because you're losing that yeah. faith that's holding you up. But hold on, hold on to that faith yeah. and just wait. Like he said. And so if that's speaking to you right now, I want you to just say in your heart, I receive you, Lord, and I'm going to trust you. He says it's a faith of the size of a mustard seed that will move a mountain. Maybe it won't move the mountain on your timing, but it'll move the mountain on God's perfect timing. I remember hearing a story one time about there's this uh, house that someone just purchased and they put this... There was this big old mountain that would block the sunlight from coming in and 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 uh and putting sunlight on some of the flowers that they had in their backyard and that this lady or whoever it was started praying against that mountain and that mountain didn't move for like 20 to 30 years yeah. and finally in the, and she gave up she just, but she gave up on the plant. She knew that if she could just pray that that mountain would be moved and all the flowers would grow, though, and, 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 and she would be able to get back to it. So she just prayed. She didn't pray that the flowers would grow. She prayed against the big thing that was in her way, and she had faith that that thing was going to move. Well, one day they, they had the bulldozers come through and knock it all down. Yeah. And then all, every, all, the, all the things that yet yeah, took time and it took a lot of preparation, but when it was in God's perfect timing, yeah. they were able to reap a harvest and do all the things that they needed to do in that garden. So don't lose faith. Hold on and just wait because God will make a way for you. Thanks. And it just takes time. What is God saying in this time that you need to do? 
What is it that you're needing to learn right now? Yeah, you may made made a make made a mistake, and 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 uh, you don't want it to get any worse than what it is. Yeah. But what if it doesn't get worse than what it is, and you're stressing out for no reason? But God is saying, you know what? Right now, I got you in a place where I am just isolating you from this world because I know if you was to go out into this free world, I know that if you was to get blessed with this thing or whatever this could be for anybody, what it could do to your soul, and I'm looking out for you. Remember, all things work together for the good of those who love God and called according to his purpose. So hold faith. Don't give up. We love you. God loves you even more. And he got your back. He had my back many times. He got your back every single day. Pick up the word. Read the word of God. Get that life in you. The more you focus on God, the more the, 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 the thoughts will just leave. You, when you're in the presence, you can find peace that surpasses all understanding. Thanks. So just dive into the word of God. Dive into his presence. Have communion with Jesus Christ. He loves you, man. So, But look. That's it for this episode, my boy AB. Thank you for coming on, nah, bro. Thank you for having me, man. This was fun. It was a lot of fun. We're gonna have to do it more often. Yeah, this ain't sure. y'all. This ain't the last time y'all gonna see him. We're gonna have to do this a lot more often. Yes, yeah, every time, at least a couple of times a, every couple of months, man. We're gonna come in. Uh, but I love you so much, love brother. Too, I love your heart. I love your family, and I'm just so grateful to have you in my life. Yeah. Um, I'm really grateful to know you. You too, dog. No, genuinely. Yeah. After the cameras are off. You know, I may, like, push you and pick on you when we're done. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, no, for real, though, look at me. I love you, bro. You're one of my best friends, you. and I thank you so much. I love you, brother. I love you. <laughs> but I'm going to get him a uh, uh, an African beaded uh, uh, God-made cross here soon. And uh, <laughs> so it's official. The hat ain't enough. The, hat ain't enough. The, 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 the name in the bio ain't enough. We got to move forward. <laughs> we got to get the tattoo on the cheek. Uh, no. Right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, but we love you guys. Thank you for tuning in to the God Made Podcast. Peace. Peace out. God Made. But yeah, if y'all watching this, I just want y'all to know Jesus is the way to go. Let me see if I can kick a, uh, a freestyle for y'all. So I told him this, I said, yeah, you hit me hard, but now it's time to get my lick back. Take what you stole and then go link back up at the kickback. People in my circle know that every bar been gift wrapped, and I hope you understand like syntax. I ain't with that. Still kill and destroy. That's in your core. I ain't talking six pack, and I wish a demon would. I don't even want that witch back. Since I been on this side, put that on Bob. Don't want to switch back. I'm covered like lip chat. Blessed so I can give back. I'm blit that. Ah, I'm with that. Blessed to be a blessing, dog. I meant that. And I know that life get heavy. Talk to God. He a gym rat. Left me up out in the mud. Now I'm on point like a click track. His mercy made an impact. Hit harder than a diss track. Kick it. Cause he gave me a break when I was on my way to hell. He saved me from myself. I should be dead or up in jail. I struggle with these feelings so much. I'm rapping in braille. God running my city, bro. Something like the mayor. Some people that get snake. Be careful who you call a king. I'm aiming for your heart. I don't even need a beam. I'm back and feeling better like I popped a sensu beam. Everywhere I go, I bring the light with me. I'm Billy Jean. Bling. Put a muzzle on the Jezebel. Shawty try to take my soul. Well, it ain't for sale. Every bar I spit dope. I don't need a scale. I got the drive like a trucker with a CDL. Never seen them fail. Down for life. I mean D for well. I'ma get it right. No more cycles like it's carousel. Do it double time. Did the crown, but ain't seen the sale. That's a bar. Watch me fit the flow like a finger roll. Give and go. Reaching greater heights on my tippy toe. If you see me fall, stick around. You gon' see me glow. Now nah, I got that glow.